episode of Mushroom Adventures. You see here, I got a cement mixer, an electric cement mixer. See, it has the motor back here. Now, you may be wondering what I'm doing with this. Well, we're going to speed up how we build our cotton seed and straw logs. Just pull a spider out of there. Of course, you can see, you know, I've used this mixer for mixing concrete and I just got done bust, busting a lot of the uh, old concrete in the drum out. I'm going to clean this thing up, Let's give it a good scrubbing and we're going to use it to uh, take our spawn and our straw or cottonseed hauls and even the uh, plaster which will greatly reduce the amount of mess that makes. And we're going to use it to mix it all up, and so we don't have to uh, mix it with our hands. Then I'm going to dump it out into bins, and then I'm going to have another idea I'm going to show you here of speeding up how we're going to get the uh, cottonseed hulls into the uh, polytubing, because it's you know it's not really a whole lot of work putting the uh, cottonseed hulls and mixture and mixing it in the uh, the bags like you know I've shown with the straw the same fashion but we want to be able to speed this up to a point where it becomes uh, industrial if you will and you know the uh, the less time we're making it is more time we're selling it and you know this is in the end it's all about making a living and uh, turning those mushrooms into money money and making chefs and their uh, customers are very happy so I'm going to get this cleaned up, get as uh, much of the junk out as I can, then I'll take uh, some bleach solution, the same uh, one cup of bleach per uh, gallon of water that I use to sterilize the basement walls and floors in a, a bleach bomb situation. I'm going to use that to uh, sterilize the inside of the strum and the outside as much as I can without uh, getting any bleach hopefully inside the motor unit. but Actually, this looks like it's pretty sealed up pretty well. So I'm going to get as you know, clean and sanitary as possible before I bring it down there. And uh, fortunately, this kind of uh, barrel or a mixer that I got at uh, Lowe's, it comes apart pretty easy in two pieces, so it's easy to move around. So I'll take it down to the basement after I get cleaned up, and uh, we'll look at some other ideas. I have the uh, cement mixer cleaned up and drying out right now. Like I said, I hit it with the uh, bleach sprayer nice and thoroughly, then rinse it off uh, a few hours later. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is I've taken this five gallon bucket you see here and I've cut the bottom out of it. Now I didn't cut it this way, I cut the bottom from the bottom and got as close to the inside rim because uh, you'll notice that the plastic is a little bit thicker and that way it uh, gives it a little bit more stability and plus it'll, it lets the uh, narrowest part of the bucket still uh, be down there because I'm going to use some of the poly tubing and you see that uh, this tubing is going to fit if I can get it there going to fit right over the bucket. How cool is that? Now you can already see where this is going. You see it holds there really snug too. When you pull it's kind of like one of those uh, Chinese finger traps. Doesn't want to come off when you pull it quick. So you can see down I'm going to have this hanging from the ceiling, probably from uh, one of these rafters up here. Have it hanging from there. 
maybe something of a rope where I can adjust the, the height as well. I'm going to put something on the front as a counterweight to uh, hold it you know, down and facing towards me. That way I can use the, uh, the bins full of the uh, mixed spawn and cottonseed hulls and plaster that I can just have this holding right there and I can just dump it right in through this bucket that'll you know keep the bag nice and open it'll fill it loosely at the bottom and then I can either tamp it down or probably just grab around the top and uh, squeeze it down like a big roll of cheese or a sausage or something you know you'll see and it might end up a little bit looser, it probably will, than uh, hand packing it, like I've always done. Which the hand packing is nice, but one advantage of doing it this way, making it looser, since now that we are flattening the logs out, if you remember, they're not round anymore, they're flat. That means that since it's looser, it's going to end up having more slack and actually getting even a flatter log, which is going to make a uh, a greater amount of surface area for mushrooms to form so maybe that'll improve things we'll have to see but I'm gonna clean this bucket up with the uh, same kind of style bleach on the outside make some system where I hang uh, it from the uh, ceiling rafter and again a counterweight on the front also too you see here I've bought some uh, improved uh, wire rack shelving I got this from Home Depot, HDX brand, it's a uh, five shelf. Now it, it looks about the same as my old shelving, which I purchased this at Walmart, but the, uh, the legs of it are considerably larger and more sturdy, as is the wire racking. It's like maybe two or three gauges higher, or lower rather. But uh, you can see here I've placed my uh, second generation uh, logs. I just kind of take them from this over. I'm going to leave this whole area over here for first generation production. And then I'm going to use these larger shelves because you can see it's uh, also a bit wider than the others, which I can lay the logs this direction and get two logs per shelf. Now, you know, theoretically, Theoretically, you could do the same with the first generation logs um, if you have the same width of shelving. But it wouldn't be a good idea with that width of shelving because when they're first generation, they're a bit more heavy. And these uh, longer ones, especially with the, the two bag, which you can see here, it's doing good. It's pinning all over. It'll uh, tend to sag on the ends, which it'll still be all right. It's just that you're going to have it, have it sagging and if maybe if you've cut too many holes close to the top together it might split so uh, just be aware but really if you if you got the cash spring for these this this uh, shelf unit was $69 in some odd sense but you can see here these second flushers are doing good where I've cut a large group out you can see it's there's no mold on the uh, the stump it's actually recolonizing with uh, my sewing that's fluffy. See here a whole bunch of uh, pins coming out the very end of it. Somehow, sometimes, you know, if the end is a little bit loose, you get my selling, it'll be like a pipeline going out to the outside and it'll do that. So if it fruit starts fruiting out the, uh, the very end of the plastic, just let it go. So I'm going to assemble this bucket idea up. And you know, I won't really have to have much of a table anymore. I'll probably have to get maybe like a, a smaller table to flatten the logs out, but that's going to be another idea I'm going to show you here too. Another improvement I've made is uh, this blue uh, recycling trash can you see. I got it at uh, Home Depot for about 30 some bucks. I guess it's a Slim Jim brand, or Rubbermaid Slim Jim, that's what it is. And you can see uh, for the amount of cottonseed hulls I want to use, it's perfect for that dimensions to measure it out. Because I was kind of tired of bringing multiple bags down into the basement. It makes a little extra mess that's unnecessary. 
But here I can just go out to the, the barn or garage and fill it up to where I need to, where you can see about 30 pounds of hauls is, when you fill it fluffy, it comes up to pretty much the top, and you know, I pack it a little inward so it doesn't fall over when I'm carrying it. But this is a good tub, it's about twice as thick as a normal trash can. And then I can use it to uh, take it down to the basement, wash it, keep it clean, and just uh, kind of make things easier, more organized, and a little cleaner. So you can see now that I have four of my bins, all full with uh, the cotton seed hauls. They've been pressed and I just put them in there, they're still steaming if you can tell. And I'm going to let these cool off for a total of an hour and a half. Normally I was uh, being able to pack logs with the uh, cotton seed hauls that were spread out on the table in just an hour because they cooled down fast enough. but. I'm going to give a full hour and a half because it stays a little warmer in those bins. And of course, you know, as it gets colder down here throughout the winter, you can cut that time back. But you see here I have my cement mixer that I've cleaned up with uh, leaf solution and rinsed it out good. I've already done uh, this process a couple times. So, um, And actually, I used to use the cement mixer a few years back when I was uh, doing straw and alfalfa. Um, but I had some, some other contamination problems that I may be associated with the cement mixer. So I just kind of thought, well, you know, I'm not going to use that again until I can figure out what the real issue is. But now that I know I have everything, you know, uh, no, no holes in my game, I'm back to using this because it makes things so much easier. Now, if you remember, I have the, uh, this yellow five gallon bucket. See, I have a knife hook up here with some rope and a couple uh, utility clamps. This bucket's nice because it fits in there real good. And I have it about that far off the floor. Now what you're going to do is you're going to build the log from the floor up and the plastic is going to be around the base of this bucket and held tight. And then we're going to pour them mixed up cotton seed hauls, grain, and plaster into it, and it's going to be easy. So uh, let's cut to uh, see how it looks when I'm mixing this stuff up in about an hour and a half. It's been an hour and a half, and it's time to uh, mix up our hauls. I'm just going to go ahead and mix up all four bins. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Grab one of these and we're just gonna pitch it in. Kind of, you can bounce most of it like this at the start. extra shelf on the ground to keep the bins off off the ground so nothing comes up. Now obviously we don't really need the uh, the holes drilled in the bins anymore because we're not draining anything out of the holes in them. So uh, if you have bins now don't worry about drilling holes in them if you have if you're pressing the holes. And if that's the case too you don't have to put the uh, shelf down because uh, don't worry about any kind of water or junk coming up through the holes. 